Hello, everybody. I wanted to uh, do a final sort of highlight on how to be successful on the Daphne or write up. All right. So first thing is make sure that you have done the first part, which is um, listing the materials. And if you have not done this part yet, remember that you can always go into um, week 10 folder. And there is a video in there that shows the whole Daphnia setup. And you should be able to um, write down all the different things we did to set up the Daphnia bottle. All right, so that's step one. Next is to make sure that you're writing the independent variable. Now I kind of did this for you. Um, remember the independent variable is that in the control bottle, which is our normal setup, that what I would usually do in all my classes in the past, I would add about 10 to 15 grains of yeast. But in the experimental bottle, we're adding 20 to 30 grams of yeast, grains of yeast every time I feed the Daphnia. Um, remember the question that we're asking is, will doubling the amount of food in the Daphnia ecosystem increase or decrease the population growth rate? Um, will, it, will it actually end up giving you more Daphnia if you feed them more. Um, the next step was to, uh, so most people would think, well, yes, definitely, then more food equals more Daphnia. But remember, we've also talked about it, um, limiting factors. So if food is your limiting factor, it's the thing that keeps your population from growing at a more, Un, unstopped if you add more and more and more food, um, there's a certain point at which that might not be good um, because you're adding a lot of bacteria and a lot more nutrients into the water. And that could actually have an adverse effect on your Daphnia population. I'm sure that if you've ever had pet fish, one of the rules is don't overfeed the fish. It's not good for the fish to have all that extra bacteria growth in the water. It changes the pH. It changes how much algae you get in the water. So that was the, one of the reasons that I wanted to look at this because I've always ta told everybody to not feed them too much. But my question is, is am I underfeeding them? So that's sort of what we're looking at. Will adding more food, doubling the food that I've been feeding them in the past, will that actually... Um, allow the population to grow more? Or will it cause the population to crash um, because it gets too yucky? So now here's your point at which you write your hypothesis. What do you think? Will doubling the amount of food, will it help the Daphnia population increase? And because why? Or will it actually make the, the population decrease? Because why? Um, so those are your, your options. So what are we going to measure? We're going to measure the Daphnia population's growth rate. That is the dependent variable. <clears throat> the dependent variable is the, usually the thing you're measuring on the y-axis of the graph. That's the thing that we're looking at. How much is the population changing over time? Okay, based on how much food they're getting. So we have two bottles. We have the control and we have the experimental bottle. And over time, we have been measuring um, how many Daphnia, I've been counting them up. Every time I count, I count what day it is of the experiment and how many Daphnia are in the bottle. And both, da both bottles started with, on day one, they both started with three Daphnia. And then every time I would count for both bottles, on day four, there were four Daphnia in the control and one Daphnia in the experimental bottle. Two of my original ones died. And so that's really how what we've been doing up until the very last day of the data, which is day 44. And you can see the result. We ended up with 55 Daphnia in the control and 95 Daphnia in the experimental bottle. Now, one of the other things I've been asking people to do is to calculate each time the population density and the population growth rate. 
So in this video, I'm going to show you one more time how to do that so that you um, can do it because I expect that this whole chart is filled out for both data tables. I expect that every single line is filled in. So I'm going to show you this one right here. So on 11.10, there, uh, which was day 23 of our experiment, in the control bottle, we had 25 Daphnia. So the bottle is holding 3.1 liters of water. So how many Daphnia per one liter are there? If I have 25 Daphnia and there are 3.1 liters of water, then I have to get out my calculator and I have to divide. So 25 divided by 3.1, and you may want to do this along with me to make sure you're doing it right. If I can get my calculator going here. Okay. So 25 divided by 3.1 is 8.06. So that means that there are eight point like around eight Daphnia per one liter. Per one liter of water. So if I'm looking at every liter of water out of the three liters, there should be about eight Daphnia in each liter. Now on this one right here, the population growth rate, we're looking at what is the percentage of growth um, in the Daphnia bottles? Like in this control bottle, what is the percentage of growth over time? So we started with three Daphnia and now we have 25. So what do we have to do? We have to, we have to figure out what is the increase in the population. So 25 minus three is 22. So our population went up by 22 Daphnia. We started with three, now we have 25, so that number is 22. And then we have to divide by the original amount of Daphnia. So our original amount was three, right? So 22 divided by three, and then in order to get to be a percentage, because otherwise you'll get a decimal, like a one, you know, you'll get a decimal. And in order to get a percent, you have to multiply it by 100. So 23, 22 divided by 3 times 100 is 733.3%. Percent. So remember, it's not enough to just write the numbers. You always have to write the units. Um, what are you actually measuring? Here we're measuring Daphnia per liter. Here we're measuring percent. So I expect you to do this for every single one of these. Okay. Now in a previous video that I just made, I also am showing you how to do the graph. Um, you should, your graph should look like this and you should be able to place it right here. So now how do you do this? Okay. I'm going to delete this so I can show you. Maybe I won't delete it. There we go. How do you get your graph? So let's say you've done your graph and you've taken a screenshot of your graph. Now you're going to go here to this little add media icon and you're going to click on my computer. And on mine, um, all my screenshots go right to my desktop. So I have to just find my last screenshot, which is this one, which no, I don't want that one, that one. And then I just click open. And then it says, all right, where do I want to put it? Right, yeah. Now I'm seeing like a little bit of a messy bit right there. So I want to crop mine a little bit, just a teeny bit to get make it look a little bit nicer. So now I've got my beautiful graph in there. And what am I going to do now? I'm going to look at this graph. I'm going to say, all right, what happened? Uh, we started out with the same exact amount of Daphnia, and now we're looking at the, the control bottle, which is the yellow line, and it, it did grow um, over time. It got up to 55 in the end, but then if I look at my experimental bottle, it went down, but then 
it went up and eventually it surged up all the way up to 95 Daphnia. So now what I have to do is I have to explain this, okay? I'm going to, on this results and discussion, all I'm going to do is verbally explain exactly what I'm seeing happen on this graph. I'm going to be very specific. This is what happened with the control bottle. This is what happened with the experimental bottle. Um, you can add in some of the qualitative data that I might have shown you about how the experimental bottle has a whole lot more algae or something like that. And then here you're going to say, why did this happen? Why do you think that the experimental bottle had so many more Daphnia? All right. Keep in mind the purpose of the experiment. What were we looking at? We were looking at adding double the amount of food. All right. And then explain the significance of your results and what your thoughts were and discuss whether your hypothesis was proved or disproved. Back in the beginning, you wrote a hypothesis. Was your hypothesis correct? Yes or no? Um, and then why? You know, like explain it. And then what would you do next if you were going to do a follow-up of this study? What would be another question you would have about the Daphnia? All right, and then that's it. And then if you do a beautiful job on this, remember it's five learning targets. And then we're going to write a CER about this. So we already have a lot of this done in class, but now it's up to you to do a brilliant job finishing it up and making sure that this really helps your grade for the final grade, which is coming up in a few weeks. All right, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions. Tutoring is on Wednesday after school.